the we are going into prayer for bold for December the 20th in the Gregorian calendar yes, year of yes. 2023. That's so right. come on, let's go to the Father in prayer. Father, we thank you. Thank we you, praise Father. you. We magnify you. We thank lift you, you up. Father. You are worthy to be praised. You are yes, worthy to be Father. adored. Father, thank throughout you, Father. this day, you've kept us. You've seen us, uh, yes. Father. Father, from everything that's not like you, and you you just put your your spirit, your holy ruach hakodesh yes. has covered us, Father. Yes. And we thank you as you bring us yes. to this time of of breath of life discipleship yes, training, Father. Father. As we gather online, Father, and we yes, thank you that that your word will go through with power. Your yes. girl, your word will go forth with authority. Yes, Father. Father, we thank you for healing thank and deliverance. You, Father. Father, we thank, thank you that you Father. heal those who are here, yes, who under the sound Father. of my voice, that you yes, deliver those Father. who who may be bound or may be captive yes. by anything, Father. Yes. And Father, we thank you that they have a testimony, Father, yes. for that you are a healer, that you You're are a, a healer, deliverer, Father. that you are worthy to yes. be praised. You're worthy yes. to be adored. And Father, we thank you as you just keep us throughout this night. Every question, Father, we thank you that for the answer, your answer, Father. Father, we can't answer the way you answer. Father, we thank you. And we just praise you right now. And we just worship you in your holy, unbeatable name. The name above all names, Father. Yeshua Hamashiach, we pray. Amen. 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 Welcome again, everybody, to Breath of Life Discipleship yes. again for December 20th in the Gregor on the Gregorian calendar year 2023. That's right. At this time, we're we're so glad that you're here. It's not too late to tell somebody, hey, you missing bold. Come That's on right. in. That's right. That's uh right. so uh let's go uh, into our communications at this time with Minister Marquita Samuel. Welcome, Minister Samuel. Yes. Thank you, Prophetess. Welcome, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Please join us each and every Tuesday at 7 a.m. Central Standard Time on Zoom for prayer. Breath of Life International Ministries believes in the power of prayer. And so we've made it a priority to gather each and every Tuesday morning at 7 a.m. Central Standard Time on Zoom to pray. And this last Tuesday, the Anderson Nation prayed that we shall truly allow Yahweh to order our steps and to work our works with joy and strength. And so this was our marching orders from last Tuesday, and it was a blessing to be able to continue to press into this place of strength, which is living in joy. And so you can hear the recording of that via our text message service. And if you did not receive the text message or you're having any trouble accessing the Zoom or the recording, please email info at bolem.info and we'll be happy to help you. Continue to invite others to join our Tuesday morning prayers as we are going forth, continuing to pray out, working the works with our Holy Father, Yahweh, right? Making sure we do what he's telling us to do. And then next, as we continue to grow in prayer, you are invited to join Teacher Carol Patterson each and every night at midnight for the Worshiping Word Warrior Prayer Watch. This is a powerful ministry that's main aim is to gather the nations to pray each and every night at midnight. The dial-in number is on the slide and no access code is needed. You are welcome to invite anyone to attend and submit their prayer requests and to gather their faith faith with those who join the line to worship and pray each and every night. And then next, you are invited to connect and donate to SOAR, which stands for Strangers, Orphans, Widows, and Emergency Relief. Elder Daphne Mitchell is the visionary of SOAR, and this powerful ministry reaches out to the homeless in the Houston region and beyond. You are invited to reach out to volunteer, donate, and learn more. The ways to donate are on the slide. And you can donate via PayPal, Zelle, Cash App, or mail your seed. And remember, every seed has the power to produce. And then next, we have Rosebud Ministries. Prophetess Patricia Wright is a visionary of Rosebud Ministries. And this powerful ministry focuses on widows and those who have experienced loss in the Houston region and beyond. Rosebud Ministries is inviting you to join them for Fragrant Fridays, which is the second Friday of each and every month at 6 p.m., Central Standard Time. And the last one was last, was Friday, December 8th. During this last Fragrant Friday, Prophetess Wright talked about navigating through loss and the upcoming events in the Gregorian calendar year of 2024. 
And so you can find all that information on the Rosebud Ministries Facebook page and Prophetess Rights Facebook page. Again, Fragrant Fridays can be viewed live via Facebook Live on uh, the Rosebud Ministries Facebook page or via the recordings on YouTube at these the Rosebud Ministries. To learn more or to volunteer, please reach out to Prophetess Wright and the ways to donate are on the slide. You can donate via Cash App or through PayPal on the website. And remember, Rosebud Ministries, where your fragrance is required. And now back to Prophetess Anderson. Amen. Thank you so much, Minister Samuel. Let's continue to um, support the ministries Amen. of, of Bolim. Uh, we're thankful for uh, Teacher Patterson and Worshiping Word Warrior, Elder Mitchell and Sower, and Prophetess Wright and Rosebud Ministries, and all of you who have ministries within Bolim and businesses. Let's continue to pray for one another that Yahweh will use us in these last and evil days. Uh, as we go forth and do what he has called us to do. Listen, I uh, want to just put this note in that for the time management workshop, what a blessing Minister Gibson was uh, to us. Uh, those of you who registered for the course, we will be sending out the um, the link uh, to the, um, the recordings. We'll put it in one message. It will come from Eventbrite. All the data is already there for us to reach out to you. So please look for that over the next couple of days. Also, um, uh, Minister Gibson sent us some things to share with you and made them accessible to us so that you can go back and review. Yes. Remember that we'll be doing another follow-up at the end of January. So those of you who may not have gotten in on the first part of it, when she comes back, you'll have an opportunity uh, to get on the train, okay? Amen. All right, so we would love to have all of those who are interested in being faithful stewards over your time, okay? Amen. I know that it has really blessed me. Um, it has called into uh, view some things and has called me into some accountability yes. on some things. And for that, I am grateful. I, I want I want to say thank you to everyone that came out on Saturday Ooh. afternoon to celebrate, you know, with me, my upcoming birthday, yeah, you know, so and of fun. course my birthday is coming up, but thank you all for your gifts, your gifts of mm -hmm. love, your seeds. I just want to take each and every one of you. I love you all to life for all that you have done and continue to do for us as we walk forth, as we go forth in ministry. So yes. love you guys for in, with all, with everything. I love you guys, okay? Yes, yes, it was a lot of fun. It was. I enjoyed was myself. Fun. Thank y'all so much. We love y'all to life. Listen, before, of course, you know, we're, we're back to teaching, working the works, and everything that we talk about yeah. is about working the works. Before we move forward with this teaching, a couple things um, that I realized um that i didn't say on shabbat um mm -hmm. with the uh why we don't celebrate christmas if you are not in attendance if you're not able to be online please go back to the last um couple of teachings remember that under videos is where you will find uh these videos for bold and under live is where you will find the yes. sabbath worship and we kept them separate on purpose so that you can uh disseminate between the two we could put them just all together but we decided to keep them that way okay. so you can know okay this is where i go for bold this is where i go for sabbath worship so we have a part one and a part two about the truth about christmas uh, just so everybody knows our stance and where we where we are uh, within mm -hmm. the ministry and those who are interested in being a part of right. BOLEM. Right. So please go back and review those. One thing that I realized that I didn't say, I thought about all the things that my self-proclamation of being uh, formerly the one of the Martha Stewart's of, um, of Christmas um, and how this was something that was that mm -hmm. I was really into until Yahweh really did um, encounter me and confront me about some things. The other thing is the origin of the wreaths. We, I know we talked about the, the tinsel and the serpent. We talked about all those things. There are some other imagery that represent the serpent um, in, in all of the Christmas decorations and everything. 
but that wreath. Um, and I was just minding my own self business, y'all. And I was walking and Holy Spirit said, you didn't mention about the wreath. And I said, I sure didn't. And so you, I, I think it will become very clear to you that when you see a wreath, now they put them on houses and entry doors and all of that. But really it is truly the origin, the symbol is unfortunately two symbols, one is a symbol of death. And this is why you get people wreaths when a loved one transitions. Y'all know that, right? You put, you go to, when you go to the uh, funeral home or what have you, you see wreaths everywhere with the, maybe the uh, person who gave the wreath with their name in the letters or what have you, because it is a symbol of death. It's also remember that a lot of these things with the Greek gods, have a lot to do with the fertility God. And so just as the ornaments represent a male um, genitalia, then the center of the wreath for those who are worshiping these, these other gods represent something for the woman, okay? I realize we have children on the, um, on the, um, on the broadcast, but the a part, portion, of the reproductive system. And so you, we have to understand these things. We have to know what they stand for That's right. so that we're not going from, you know, we're supposed to be living from faith to faith. We're supposed to be living from harvest to harvest. And mm -hmm. these things are trying to put us really from death to death, from decline to decline, yes. always going down, always getting into bondage. And so I, I kept thinking about that when I realized and studied what these things represent, that this is what I'm welcoming into my home. And everyone who comes into my home, I'm welcoming that spirit for them to have to deal with. And so just bear these things in mind. Even um, I did, we talked about this some years ago mm -hmm. with the congregation, but you know, even when it had nothing to do with Christmas, I just love making wreaths because, you know, it was a, a release for me. I could put flowers or things like that. And boy, I was just like, go girl, man, this looks good. And when Holy Spirit, yeah, get rid of all of it. And so because it is opening up portals um, that are detrimental to us. So continue to be steadfast, continue to be prayerful, pray for, let's pray for our loved ones. Let us not stand in the seat of anything except Yahweh's love concerning That's them right. and that they will not fall into the traps of the enemy right. that are set, excuse me, by the enemy for them. The second thing that we wanted to cover was uh, Brother DeMarcus had a question about um, Romans 14, 5 and 6. And let me read that. Mm -hmm. And Apostle and I just wanted to take a few minutes before we go into uh, the study on tonight, uh, we wanted to just have a conversation about this because it's a very good, um, a very good solid scripture for us for this time of year and mm -hmm. how people justify the things that they want to do, as well as other times, you know, just yeah. throughout the year. Um, so Let me go, go ahead, Apostle. Yes, Romans sir. the fourteenth chapter, verse starting at verse five says, "One indeed judges one day above another; another judges every day alike. Like let each one be completely persuaded in his own mind." Verse six says, "He who minds the day minds it to Yahweh, and he who does not mind the day to Yahweh he does not mind it. He who eats eats to Yahweh." For he gives Elohim thanks, and he who does not eat, to Yahweh he does not eat, and gives Elohim thanks. Okay, so in order to address this, I think, Apostle, we need to go up to mm -hmm. the first um, four verses. Yes. So you heard this. This is speaking about preferring a day over another, and then about what we eat, okay? Yes. So now let's go back and read before yes. this scripture well, romans the 14th chapter verse 1 says and receive him who is weak in the belief not criticizing his thoughts 
One indeed believes to eat all food, but he who is weak eats only vegetables. He that eats, let him not despise him who does not eat. And he that does not eat, let him not judge him who eats, for Elohim received him. Who, uh, verse 4 says, who are, you to, who are you that judges another servant? To his own master he stands or falls, but he shall be made to stand, for Elohim is able to make him stand. All right, so now we got a little bit more to the picture, but you got to read this whole chapter. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's really powerful. As all of us know, mm -hmm. Paul, the Apostle Paul's writings are often used in Christendom, mm -hmm. in Christianity, in churchianity, to dispute the teachings of Yeshua. Yeah. Um, and this is unfortunate because basically the writings are taken out of context, yes. right? And so this scripture is definitely being used out of context with the Apostle and I, um, because it addresses two things, mm -hmm. two things, two particular commands that Yahweh has given us. One you'll see in the scripture talks about Shabbat and then the other about the um, dietary. dietary laws. But really remember every letter from Apostle is addressed, Apostle Paul is addressing a specific issue in a specific congregation, all right, mm -hmm. or a congregation of that region. And so he is writing to the, the, the work that he has um, established there, all right? Mm -hmm. And so he's, he's talking about these things and trying to address something that's going on with them. So mm -hmm. when he goes into this, I went back and read this scripture and I was telling the pastor, wait, 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 let's go back. I said, wait a minute, it's a couple things going on here. One thing is speaking about when he says, he who does not eat, and then he that eats, he's speaking about fasting. Mm -hmm. And so he's talking about if someone is, it, so I went and I did some cross check and I was like, that's what, okay, that's one thing. It's one thing that he's addressing. So he's saying that if somebody says they're gonna fast on a certain day and they're doing that, we are not to look at them and say, well, why you didn't fast? You know, why aren't you doing it like this? If somebody does the vegetables, like remember uh, somebody we know, like Prophet Daniel, mm -hmm. right? Then we're supposed to say, okay, we can't judge. They are Yahweh's servants and we can't judge that. We can't say, well, I don't think you're consecrating right, unless Yahweh gives us wisdom for someone who's consecrating and it's detrimental to them, okay? Mm -hmm. The other thing he's talking about here is, he is saying eating food. And that's another thing that we have to get it straight. When the scripture speaks about eating food, then go back to Leviticus 11 mm -hmm. and study what Yahweh calls food. So Apostle Paul is only addressing what Yahweh calls food. So he is not saying that all of a sudden what Yahweh has said um, that is, is unclean is now clean. Y'all know people say, yeah, he just said, bless it and eat it. He says specifically about food. And in the scripture, as we know in the teachings, food means whatever Yahweh has said is food right. and not the unclean things. And then um, uh, Brother Demarcus, you said in the comments, and yes, you're correct. He's also talking about when people begin to eat food that's offered up to idols. He was dealing with that with the church in Rome mm -hmm. as well, with the congregation at Rome. So these are things that, that, remember, it's food. It's not an argument of whether or not the dietary laws are still solid and in place because he references food. And when I caught that, I said, wait a minute, he's only talking about what in scripture mm -hmm. we would call food. Now in 2023, we, we call everything food. Air, yeah. air, everything. Everything you could fry or fricassee. Air, everything you could bake or, you know, whether it's Yahweh it's, said it or he didn't or say not. it. <laughs> but yeah, in no. scripture, that does not, that does not translate in scripture. In scripture, yes. Yahweh only calls food 
what he has um uh apostle approved that's right that we can eat mm -hmm. so a pig is not considered food that's right so when apostle paul is addressing this mm -hmm. he's only addressing the things that we are allowed by scripture mm -hmm. to eat and then he's also dealing with them about mixing and doing the paganism as well yeah so um th these are things that and i'm i'm glad brother demarcus asked about this because these are scriptures that will try to be twisted mm -hmm. and saying i don't know why y'all still doing that old testament stuff because mm -hmm. apostle paul said just bless it and eat it yeah yes bless and eat food yeah Bless and eat the thing that Yahweh says. And once again, it's not what we call food. No. Oh, Apostle, I'm so glad that you said that because this is the other thing. Um, so again, thank you, Brother Demarcus, for this question. Um, um, also, he says in verse two, one indeed believes to eat all food, but he is um, he who is weak eats only vegetable. This is believes. This is what in the opinion. And then he goes on to say, there was an oh yeah one indeed judges one day above another another judges every day alike let each one be completely persuaded in his own mind mm -hmm. this is another thing apostle paul is telling us that your opinion don't matter it's what yahweh says but you need to be convinced and persuaded in your own mind mm -hmm. me and apostle can show you every scripture from genesis to revelation about shabbat about the uh, dietary laws, but you have to be persuaded in your own mind. Apostle Paul was not saying, hey, if you think one day it's better than the other, it's all good. No, no, no. He was saying that you're going to have to be persuaded of Yahweh's word in your own That's mind. Right. And so for all of these things, this is where it, where the rubber meets the road, as people say, mm -hmm. you have to be persuaded in your own mind about these things and so when when folks are asking you questions when they are asking you about why you do what you do you need to be persuaded in your own mind yeah. that this is what yahweh has said and have the scriptures uh to back that up yes. all right brother De demarcus is your question answered sir You can type it or you can unmute it. Okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you again for your question. Um, just, just a couple things, y'all, that I think would be helpful too. Mm -hmm. um, read that whole chapter though um, about how he settles the debates. But here's, there were a couple scriptures. Okay. Um, Rome, y'all, y'all can put these in the chat just so that you have just a couple scriptures that Apostle Paul makes it clear about his stance on the commands of the law of Yahweh. Uh, Romans 3 and 31. Let's, let's, you want to, you're going to read that? Yeah, it says, uh, Romans, the third chapter, verse 31 says, Do we then nullify the Torah through the belief? And there's a question. Once again, do we then nullify the Torah through belief? Let it not be. On the contrary, we establish the Torah. Yes. So we establish the instructions. Let ev let us be an example of the the instructions of Yah being established in the earth. So if people are using in their conversations with you, um, Apostle Paul, to dispute what. Yeshua and what Yahweh has said, you can say, wait a minute. Remember, he was a law keeper. He was a Benjamite. A, a Benjamite. Yeah. He knew these commands right. and he followed the commands. Well, uh, also, Romans, the seventh chapter, that's, that's, verse 12. Yes. Put that in there. Yes. Romans, the seventh chapter, verse 12 it says, so that the Torah truly is set apart. Yes. And the command set apart. Yes. And righteous and good yes so he sees he sees he's speaking about his view of the commands of yah and go down to 7 and 22 apostle 22 says for i delight in the torah of elohim according to the inward man that's right so he is telling us the carnal man 
is always going to go against instructions mm -hmm. <laughs> most times that are good for us, you know, but the inward man is going to align with the instructions. And when you see that, that particular um, scripture, you start thinking about Psalm, right? For his delight is in the Torah mm -hmm. of Yah or of Elohim. Right. And in his Torah, doth he meditate day and night. That's right. The instructions of Yah, let's keep them on our minds and keep them at the forefront That's of right. our minds. Amen. And so these are things that we, as we are growing up in the faith in Yah, that we need to be very clear on our stance and mm -hmm. also not allow people to use Apostle Paul's writings yes. to try to say that, well, he didn't agree with Yah. And this is and and this is because he was an apostle after Yeshua was raised from the dead and, and all of these kind of things that people would try to use. Uh, to try to do what it is they want to do. Apostle Paul was someone who was called to the non-believers and to those who did not have um, a covenant with Yah to bring them into the faith. And he was adamant about them coming in the right way. And this is why Romans 14 was even written mm -hmm. in the first place. He said, don't, don't be that way to those who are weaker in the faith bring them in the right way all right okay y'all so listen let's jump right in again thank you brother demarcus for your questions uh question if any of you have any questions about anything we are absolutely open to um when welcoming your questions to yeah. answer them all right i must work the work so y'all ready i must work the words Father, we got to work the works. We got to work the works. Come on, let's share the slides. All right, y'all. Okay. We ready to work the works. We ready to work the works. We ready to work the works. All right. So, Father, we bless you. We thank you for this time together. Breathe on this word and breathe on us, Father, that we will truly work your works because you have sent us during this time in Yeshua's mighty name. Amen and amen. Remember, 15 installments of you are worthy, you are capable, you are amazing. Don't forget that in everything we do. Don't forget that. I think another slide that I'm going to put in mm -hmm. beginning on Shabbat, Apostle reminded me of earlier this year about the series Embrace Your Increase. That's right. Do y'all know we did 22, count them, two. 22, 22. 22 installments of Embrace Your Increase. All of these things, I started looking back at how Yahweh brought us through this time, especially as we were preparing up for, for the biblical new year, because that ended right before the biblical new year. Then we got into the new year, we got into all of the feasts, and Yahweh was like, okay, I need to do this. I need I need to teach my people this. He is arming us for what is and what is to come. So let us not be weary in our well-doing. Let us not fall asleep and go into a stupor. Let's be alive and fervent and 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 vibrant in Yah, even when sometimes we don't necessarily in our flesh mm -hmm. feel like it. Think yourself happy. I, I think myself, you know, uh, to have what Yahweh says that I will have. I'm not thinking something esoteric that's somewhere out there. Mm -hmm. No, I am thinking, I'm meditating on the word of Yah for my life. And Yahweh is manifesting it by his glorious power, by his kingdom power. He is sovereign. And then remember that Yahweh knows the plans he's planning for you. Come on, y'all. Right. That's right. It's 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 a, a present thing. He knows the plan he is planning for us. They're good plans, plans of peace and not evil to give us a future and an expectancy. Jeremiah 29 and 11. Now with all of that, with all of that yes. at your back, with all of that in your spirit, man, and with all of that in your core, where do you go from there? What are you going to do with this power? What are you going to do with the power of Yah 
that is on your life. What are you going to do with knowing that he has a blueprint for your life? Then guess what we're going to do? John 9 and 4. It is necessary mm -hmm. for me to work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one is able to work. Listen, I have been, as long as I can remember, I have been in somebody's church, grew, grew up in, in the church. And I remember as a girl, uh, people saying, you know, Yeshua is soon to return. He's soon to return. And so if you think about it, in my lifespan, now there's 40 years that, okay, probably 45 years that I can remember, maybe 47 years, <laughs> it's getting more and more, <laughs> that I can remember people saying, you know, that he's coming back, he's That's coming right. back. That's right. Okay. That's right. Well, y'all, 47 years has passed. And so we are closer to his return than when I was a little girl. That's right. And so we have to really teach and minister the word with urgency. Mm -hmm. This is this is the thing that I always think about. When you study the scriptures, you study Apostle Paul, you study all of the apostles. They, you can tell that they believe that Yeshua was going to return in their lifetime. They ministered as though Yeshua was going to return in their lifetime. And I want to challenge you to please, whatever you're saying to your family, whatever you're saying to your friends about the return of the Messiah, please underscore the urgency as mm -hmm. though he's going to return in your lifetime. Yes. Don't be lackadaisical. I don't know when. Guess who else doesn't know when? Mm -hmm. Guess guess who else doesn't know when? Yeshua himself. The scriptures say, he say, I, I don't know. My father, only my father knows. And so only Yah knows when that time is coming. That's right. So it's imperative that we teach and we preach the word as though it's going to happen in our lifetime. It is imperative that we are admonishing our families like it's going to take place in our lifetime that night is coming and no man is going to be able no one is going to be able to work all right y'all got that got two takeaways from you I, hey this is how yahweh is working this is how he's working he giving me two i'll be looking for three sometimes sometimes he gives me five so i guess he said this time you get two again <laughs> so the first <laughs> the first takeaway take action is the righteous lives by faith. That's right. The righteous, we live by faith, by belief. Let's go to Romans 1 and 17. That's Romans 1 and 17. Let's start there. Romans 1 and 17. Let me read that. Sure, sir. Yes. Well, all right. Romans, the first chapter. Verse 17 says, for in it, the righteous of Elohim is revealed from righteousness. the righteousness of Elohim yes. is revealed from belief to belief as it has been written, but the righteous shall live by belief. So here I was saying it earlier. That was a spoiler alert, I guess, um, about the need for us to live from belief to belief. Y'all, I, I promise I don't be making the, these things up. It's in scripture right in front of us that in the righteous it for in it, the righteousness of Elohim is revealed from belief to belief. So as we are increasing yes. in our faith, then we will see what the father wants to reveal That's to right. us. He wants to reveal his righteousness, his right standing. Righteousness means right standing with Yah, right? Righteous. He wants to reveal it to us, but he's going to do it through our faith. So we're going to have to really get this, that we live by faith. by faith. So if we don't have faith, what's going to happen to us? We have to have faith and we have to increase in our faith. Let's go to Hebrews, Apostle 10 and 38, please. All right. I believe, I believe. Hebrews 10. Verse 38 says, but the righteous shall live by belief. Yes. But if anyone draws back, my being has no pleasure in him. Oh, my goodness. Listen, 
um, let me tell y'all something. Yeah. When I was in my twenties, yeah, I want to say late twenties and then early thirties. A couple of people told me I had a drawback spirit. Mm-hmm. I hadn't read this scripture yet, so I didn't know they were really saying something very damaging and detrimental to me. They were telling me, and I get where they were coming from. Mm-hmm. Apparently, they had maybe they had read the scripture, but they they were saying that you know, and I know they meant well. These were not people who were malicious to me. Even years later, I know they didn't mean any harm, but they were saying to me that the father really wanted to use me, and I I could not afford to draw back. And they were like. We see that spirit, it like you you're drawing back, like a drawback spirit. So here we go. Fast forward, I learned to really study the, the scripture, mm-hmm. and I get to the scripture, y'all. Father, I don't know how many times I repented. I don't know how many times I said, Father, if they were in error when they said, if they were telling the truth, I repent. I'm just saying that because this is. Do y'all hear what this scripture says? that we're we're to live by faith or by belief but if anyone draws back if you draw back my being has no pleasure in him i'm just like oh no well i need i need what father wants to do in me and i need him to have pleasure in me and i need my being to have pleasure because it is in right standing that's right with him so we have to be in right standing righteousness see if we're talking about righteous it's about right standing with yah that's right if we're talking about draw back and it has and no pleasure um that's not in a good place Mm -hmm. so if you are finding yourself drawing back from what yahweh has said for you to do repent and get on the right track and do what yahweh has told you to do Stop drawing back for whatever reason. Go forth in Yahweh's powerful, powerful authority as he gives it to you. Habakkuk 2 and 4. If you're wondering, um, in both of these scriptures, if you're in the scriptures translation, you will see that there's a cross-reference. Both of these scriptures are referencing Habakkuk 2 and 4. Now, most times, um, uh, Pastor, if you don't mind, Go ahead and read one through four. Because most times we think, write the vision, make it plain. So, two. so Habakkuk 2, mm-hmm. Habakkuk 2, verses 1 through 4. I stand at my watch yes. and station myself on the watchtower yes, sir. and wait to see what he says to me mm-hmm. and what to answer when I am reproved. Mm-hmm. Verse 2, and Yahweh answered me and said, write the vision and inscribe it on tablets so mm-hmm. that he who reads it runs. Mm-hmm. Verse three, for the vision is yet for an appointed time yes. and it speaks of the end yes. and does not lie. Yes. If it lingers, wait for it, for it shall certainly come, it shall not delay. Verse four says, see, he whose being is not upright in him is puffed up but the righteous one lives by the, his steadfastness. So, and by the way, now this is very powerful that this word steadfastness mm-hmm. in um, in uh, the Hebrew, and then, oh, I'm gonna get that to that later. I'm getting, I'm, I'm going, I think I'm going too uh, quick into that. Am I, let me see. Okay, yeah, never mind, y'all. Uh, we going <laughs> We're going to get to that later. We're going to get to the Hebrew uh, word, but the steadfastness. So remember what the scripture says that um, if your being is is not upright, what Yahweh, I believe, really wants to get in these frontal lobes, in our brains, and in our hearts, is that our uprightness is tied to our faith, y'all. And remember that even Abraham, the scripture says, by faith, we call it the hall of faith in Hebrews, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's 
by faith and by faith and by faith. This is what, what those who are listed did. But for Abraham, the scripture says that his faith in Yah, it was attributed to him as righteousness. Mm -hmm. And this is what Yah is trying to get us to understand that our belief is tied to being in right standing with him. Remember the scripture in Psalm mm -hmm. when Yahweh said, I swore in my wrath that the children of Israel, they will not enter into my rest. Why? Because of lack of faith, unbelief. And so it's imperative that we we come up in our faith. That's going to be the next takeaway. So I don't want to take away from that. So let's go to the next takeaway or take action. And it is, it's time to level up, y'all. I had to depart from our, what our um, back, background was on that one mm -hmm. to really get this through. It's time to level up in our faith. It's time to level up. Everybody want to level up. Oh, I want to level up, level up, up on my job, level up in my money, level up in my relationships, level up. Hey, hey, I'm going to level up. How about we level up in our faith? Yes. We need to level up this next, these next steps. I promise you that I'm not making these things up, that the father has been speaking to me and apostle. These next steps we got to make, and it's already coming to pass, is going to require faith. You got to level up in your faith. You're going to have to level up yes. in your faith. So Mark 6, verses 1 through 6, I thought it would be good to bring Yeshua into this conversation, and let's see what he has Mark to say. Mark 6. Yes, verses 1 through 6. See what the master has to say. And he went away from there and came to his own country. Mm -hmm. And his taught ones followed him. Verse 2, and Sabbath having come, he began to teach in the congregation. And many who heard him were astonished, saying, where did he get all this? And what wisdom is this which is given to him? that such miracles are done through his hands. Verse 3, is this not the carpenter, the son of Miriam, and brother of Jacob, and Yosef, and Yehuda, and Shimon, and art not his sisters here with us? And they stumbled in him. Verse 4, and Yeshua said to them, a prophet is not unappreciated except in his own country and among his own relatives and in his own house. Verse five, and he was unable to do any miracles there except that he laid his hands on a few sick ones and healed them. Verse six, and he marveled because of their unbelief and he was going around among the villages teaching. That's it, verse six? That's six. Verse six. Mm -hmm. So listen, okay. Here's Yeshua. Wise prophet is talking about leveling up in our faith and our belief. Mm -hmm. Because here it is, Yeshua, the one who, as he lives in us, we also have limitless power. But here is the son of Elohim, the son of Yahweh yes. in the earth. That's right. The scripture says in John that he was anointed without measure That's do we right. understand what that means that there was no limitation None. to the oil that was on his life okay and he comes to his own home and he says look a prophet is the only way place a prophet is unappreciated is in his own territory because people are always trying to match you to who you used to be and what you used to be okay in in that ain't that Joseph and Sally's daughter? What's she doing? Talk, y'all. Somebody, somebody said that to somebody who who I grew up in in church with with mm -hmm. the, these families. And one of the ministers, she called me. She's like, "Yeah, so so I said, what what is she doing? You know, like, ain't that Joseph and Sally's daughter? Yes. You know what she, what she talking about? All this stuff, you know, because people." are always comparing you or trying to bring you into a place of your past. Not everybody, y'all, but people who don't understand where you are going or where you have gone 
will try to keep you in a box where they understand you. I understand when you broke, so I don't understand you being wealthy. So I'm going to say, oh, look at you, you're, you're bougie now, huh? Mm -hmm. you're, you're drinking all that, that good tea. Uh-huh, I say you drink, uh, using all that imported uh, honey. No, you just go to the bees in the backyard. What's wrong? Uh, yes, this is going to be me talking to you. Child, that, ooh, that looked like some good tea. Where you got it from? <laughs> this is how I'm going to be. Not talking about, oh, you think you something. You think because people want to keep you in a place where they understand you. As soon as they don't understand you, they begin to accuse you. And this is what was happening to Yahshua. Yeah. And so the issue is here, read, if you read, go back to verse five again. It's not plural there, y'all. It says, and he was unable to do any miracle. One miracle he was not able to do. He was able to do, it's a round number, zero miracles. No miracle took place in his hometown. Why? Because of unbelief. The scripture says he laid hands on That's a few right. sick ones and healed them. That's a whole nother teaching because now you see the delineation between healing and miracles right mm -hmm. there in that scripture. So it's the miracle, the, the portal of miracles was not able to open up because of unbelief. We say that things have been held up. Oh, prophetess, you don't understand. Things that maybe you're holding them up. Maybe I'm holding my own miracle up because of unbelief. That's why it's time to level up. Come on, y'all, level up. Do whatever sign you have to do, level up. It's time to level up in our yeah. faith. Yeshua, he marveled at their unbelief. That's Do right. you understand Marvel? He was amazed that there could be such a lack of unbelief in a region that birthed him out. See, that's why I always tell people, don't, don't think that because you came from somewhere that you are bound by that place. Because what if Yeshua had conformed to where he was born? That's right. What if he didn't understand that he actually came from Yahweh? What will happen if you That's right. would just really believe that you actually came from Yahweh and not from Macomb? You know what I'm saying? In Lafayette. Now I'm telling you, I, I, I listen, y'all, with all of his issues, all of his issues, I definitely am not ashamed to be from Louisiana. But let me tell you something. That's just my earthly, my earthly place that I came from. But really, I came from Yah. You yes, came from Yah. It is. And don't let anybody keep you in a place anybody. that they understand you, just keeping you bound. That's right. They understand no faith, mm -hmm. me. Yeah. But what about when I explode on the scene and have and I've leveled up in my faith? That's you right. may not understand it, but I, I got to walk it out. That's One right. more scripture, because I want to stay out of time uh, to talk about this. Matthew 8, 5 through 13. Let's talk about the master again. Let's see him marveling again. All right. Matthew 8, 5 through 8. I mean, 5 through 13 says, and when Yeshua had entered Nehum, a captain came to him, appealing to him. Mm -hmm. saying, Master, my servant is lying in the house paralyzed, grievously tortured. And Yeshua said to him, I shall come and heal him. And the captain answering said, Master, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only say a word and my servant shall be healed. Verse 9, for I too am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. Verse 10, and when Yeshua heard, he marveled and said to those who followed, truly, I say to you, not even in Israel have I found such great belief. 
Verse 11, and I say to you that many shall come from east and west and sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Yitzhak and Jacob in the reign of the, he of the heavens, but the son of the rain shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Verse 13, and Yeshua said to the captain, go, and as you have believed, and so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that hour. My, uh... It's time to level up in our faith, y'all. How is it that this man, this captain can come and say, Yeshua, oh, you don't actually have to come physically to my house. Yeah. But I, I know if you say a word, come on, y'all. Say a word and my servant will be healed. This is, I love the history of the Bible and how it teaches, how the scripture teaches us. This is why it's imperative that we level up in our faith and that we surround ourselves with people who are leveling up in faith. And I want people to be around me because I'm leveling up That's in my right. faith. That's right. I want people to know that I'm one of the four that will pull back the roof. I, I'm one That's of the right. four. That's right. Let's get to stepping That's and right. pulling back the roof one, to two, let, yes, to, to three, let down, let your bed down. That's right. Right there in front of the master. That's right. I'm one, I'm, I, I'm one of those that's like this captain that will go to the father on, on your behalf. That's right. And say, look, you don't even have to come under my roof. I know if you say a word, I know sister so-and-so this person will be healed this is where our faith has to be and we need to be that excuse me for one another level up in your faith it's the time to do it don't forget these are standard foundational things this is i don't want you to see this as a luxury there mm -hmm. are things you think about a luxury car you think about a luxury uh i don't know handbag you think of a luxury shoe you think of a luxury whatever a luxury pair that's of jeans right. that's right something that costs more it might have 55 pockets on it mm -hmm. okay where is your standard might have two pockets on it okay leveling up in your faith is the two pocket example okay this is not a luxury this is not oh i might have faith i might not have faith can we get to the place where Yeshua will marvel That's at our right. great faith, at our great faith? He says, when Yeshua heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, truly I say to you, not even in Israel mm -hmm. have I found such great belief or great That's faith. Right. And then he goes into this discourse. This is what, man, we can't be missing this in the scripture. Most times people will stop there and Holy Spirit's like, uh, keep reading. Then he goes into this discourse that if we're not found in a place of faith, what's going to happen? Outer darkness and weeping and gnashing of teeth. Talking about the lake of fire, you all. We cannot afford to be walking in some kind of watered down faith, some kind of today I believe, tomorrow I don't we must level up be short up in our faith that's right and what happened the the captain he went he said go and as you have believed what has happened so let it be done okay let's level up let's level up come on come, come on, on lay your hands on yourself up. i level up in my faith in the name of yeshua come on it's, it's time to come up so this is what i was going to say but it was too soon <laughs> with yes, Rebecca. It does. So, huh? Yes, it does. We leveled it up with our faith. Okay. Yes. Amen. So, in um, okay, Apostle, get me off. Okay. Oh, uh, that's okay. Um, okay. So, I was gonna say this earlier with um Habeka too. Remember, he says the just shall live by mm -hmm. steadfastness. So in the Hebrew, that is H539. Yes. Do y'all know? See, Father keeps leading me to these words mm -hmm. that are only in a couple scriptures. Do y'all know there are only two scriptures? Go and look it up for yourself. Okay. Yes. Go look it up in the Old Testament. 
This is why people get confused and they think faith just came out of nowhere in the renewed mm -hmm. covenant. This, this, this level of yes. faith and this word that is used in Habakkuk 2 and 4 is only used twice in the um, Old Testament. Okay. Okay. And Habakkuk 2 and 4 is one of those scriptures. But I dug into the word so that I could see how else that can't be that this reference to faith is only in two places in the Old Testament. And so I said, where else would it be? So I dug to the core word. And the core word is Strong's H539. And it's Aman, or almost sounds like Amen. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so now this root word is in the scripture as in King James Version as believe, assurance, faithful, sure, established, trust, verified. Wow, huh? Steadfast, continuance, father. And that's something. Bring up. What about this one? Nurse, be nursed, surely be, stand, stand fast, and trusty. One is even failed. So that would be interesting to start to study that out. Mm -hmm. But this word means to support, confirm, be faithful, uphold, nourish, to be established, be faithful, be carried, make firm, yes. to stand firm, to trust, to be certain, to believe in. So it's imperative in this time. We should not be on shaky ground. It is time to level up, level up, level up. Let's go up, go up, yes. go up in our faith. We cannot afford to be lacking in this area in this time. Saints, I want to encourage you in this time. The scripture says the righteous, we live by faith. So if our faith is not leveled up, we're going to have problems living the life that Yah has called us into. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. That's right. Apostle Dandy, let's go. All right. So at this time, I want to go to uh, the students and come on. What are your questions? What are your comments? It's time to level up, y'all. Oh, if we're going to work the works, keep up. this is how we're going to work the works is through faith. If we are always afraid to move forward in what we don't understand and what we've never seen before, if we're always trying to recreate what we, we've done before, mm -hmm. would this seem to work? But maybe now Yahweh wants us to level up in our faith mm -hmm. and go forward. So any questions or comments? Anybody want to further discuss this? Anybody want to bring another scripture into the mix? Just raise your hand and you'll be acknowledged. Come on, Apostle Dandy. Every time I continue to hear these teaching, it, it really challenges me and changes my life. Praise and, God. And, and I praise Yahweh for it. Amen. And the so I I wanted two things um, Holy Spirit brought to mind. Mm -hmm. So from Mark chapter six, okay. right, where he you know where you spoke about the only place a prophet is unappreciated is in their own town, right? What happens to us and, and Holy Spirit? And, and you know, I always say I don't like when he does this because usually he's talking about me first. <laughs> <laughs> Is that oh, because of this, sometimes we back up from our faith mm -hmm. and place limitations on our own selves. Mm -hmm. And we become sidetracked by our mindset. And this is now where Holy Spirit has shown me that double-mindedness come in. Mm -hmm. Because I hear what the words say, but I also know what my people say, and they That's know, right. so what if they're right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so it then took me over to the next thing that he said to me is, 
our faith is always constant. We're always having faith in something. Come on, Apostle. Mm -hmm. So, who is your faith in? Mm -hmm. Right? This, this man in, in Matthew 8, he came to Yeshua. He refused to put his faith in what he saw, which is what a lot of us do. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. put our faith in what we see rather than in who Yeshua is and mm -hmm. what he has deposited in us. Mm -hmm. And that's not leveling up our faith. Right. That's, that's going in the opposite direction. And, and in one of the scriptures earlier, I think it, it, it spoke about, um, I was trying to find it, but I couldn't remember where, where it spoke about, you know, you, you, you're dealing now with hell. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So leveling up, you know, and, and I really pray that we all get it. Mm -hmm. Leveling up is now looking at ourselves and figuring out where is my play, my faith? Yes. Have I displaced it? Yes. Yes. And yes. if I have, now I need to make a decision. After all of this that we've been through, all the teachings we've had, you know, um, I'm worthy, I'm capable, mm -hmm. I'm amazing, I'm embracing mm -hmm. my increase. Mm -hmm. If we haven't begun to realize that, hey, this, this is me that Yahweh is talking about because yes. Yeshua lives in me. So therefore, I have the authority to acknowledge the authority in my life. Yes. So that his authority becomes prevalent because it's not our own authority. Mm -hmm. It's his authority. So I just wanted to, to share that. It's yeah. really, really been challenging and I'm really grateful for it. Amen. Apostle, let me tell you something. This, um, this one, when the father said, okay, now y'all can't teach this without talking about faith. So we yes. prayed through it and he said, you're going to teach through it and you're going to walk through it and you're going to have to embrace this because if he is, this is the thing that I realized these connections and scriptures that we don't put together, that if he is equating my faith with right standing with him, then things are not going to go the way they should go according to what he has planned if I'm not in right standing with him. Yeah. But the right standing with him is dependent on my faith. So all of these things work together. And if we don't understand that, then we don't realize that we're hindering the breakthrough. Right. If we say it's the devil, <laughs> this is our go-to. I'm in spiritual warfare. It's our go-to. Y'all, my name means warrior. So I listen, mm -hmm. I could talk about this all day and all night. I'm not saying that spiritual warfare is not real. Yes. But sometimes what we're calling spiritual warfare is actually our rebellion. Oh, Father. Oh, man, choices. And, and choices that go against what Father is saying because our faith is lacking and slacking mm -hmm. and, and not developing. And Father asked me a question, y'all. This See, I got to walk through this. I got to walk it out. When I was walking through these scriptures, he said, so tell me something. What is your, let, let's go back to your time management and all these 10 declarations you made according to what, you know, the facilitator told y'all make 10. She didn't say put a goal. She said put a declaration over yourself. He said, let's see where this aligns with your faith. Yes. Do, do you have anything on here that say you need to go to school for faith somewhere in here? Are you, are you going to get your PhD in faith? Where is your PhD in faith? See, this is where sometimes we are trying to go after the thing that we believe Yahweh is saying for us to go after, not knowing what's underneath all of that. 
So I went back to my list. I did what, what he told me to do. Mm -hmm. He said, look at that number one. This is number one on my list. Yes. Number one, I won't tell the whole thing because we don't have time to go into all that. But number one on my list is about my relationship and right standing with y'all. How you like that? Yes. And so he said, this has been number one since the first day that y'all went into the workshop. This has been number one. He said, so if it is your number one priority mm -hmm. that you are in right standing with me, then we're going to have to talk about your faith, sister. That's right. Daughter, sweetheart, we got to get on this faith and you're going to have to level up, level up. Let's come up in your faith. Your faith. Because grain of a mustard seed faith and, and a measure of faith that I've given you will no longer suffice for what I'm calling you into now. And if a grain of a mustard seed faith can get me to tell the mountains to be moved and to be cast into the midst of the sea, what is Yah about to bring us into that's going to require more than that? That's right. Oh my. This is what we have to really look at, that our faith is equated to right standing with Yahweh. Then I need to go back and look at where's my faith. And he told me, be intentional. He said, you got the right, the right declaration here, but understand that the declaration is going to require increase in faith. And it's going to have to be intentional. It's going to have to be you going on fasting and praying that your faith is not going to fail you. That's right. That your faith is going to have the kind of, oh my God, oh my God that your faith is going to have have a structure that it's going to be so structured yes. that can hold you up y'all hear what i'm saying we talking about having a stable foundation and being built on yeshua so that has to be it has to be that strong structure and that solid structure and thank you for saying this apostle dandy because definitely this came to me that it's just not about us it's not about us. This faith that Father is trying to birth in and through us is because of the impact we need to make in the earth. Amen. Can I, and can yes, I read with a, oh, with, sure. With, because we talk about faith. Let, yes. let me read the scripture of the biblical definition yes. of what faith is. Hebrews yes. 11 and 1 from the scriptures version says, and belief yes. is the substance, substance of what is expected. Yes. The proof of what is not seen. Yes. So so we have a substance of what is expected, and then we have some uh, of something that's not seen, but yet we still have to believe that it's there. Yeah. yeah. So so when we're talking about faith, it goes beyond our finite. Uh, imagination or our, what we uh, understand and what we believe because it's going to sustain us in such a way that that we know that you know uh, that if if we believe y'all for it to be done then guess what we have to stand on it and and not have doubt that it won't be done because a lot of times you know our human mindset because it didn't happen for somebody else then sometimes we don't think it'll happen for us or uh, so so we have to stand and know that yahweh is saying that if you trust me then guess what we're going to manifest this thing is going to happen according to my word are we are we working according to the word of yah do we understand what the word of yah is saying in these times when we talk about leveling up when we talk about getting in a place where we know that he's going to work it out beyond mm -hmm. what we could even think or imagine absolutely you know that word that apostle uh just gave from hebrews 11 mm -hmm. so um the proof so this is what i love about the scriptures translation right yeah so in the king james version it says the evidence of things not seen Mm -hmm. And uh, the Greek word for it is the proof. Yes. See, so that's why I love the scriptures translation. Just bring that word right on up to you. That's right. And say, say, here, here you go. It's the proof. And Holy Spirit will always challenge us right. on this. Let me tell you what this word means. The proof It's a proof that by which a thing is proved or tested. This is like my least favorite part. <laughs> I 
I can be completely honest. My least favorite part yes. is when Yahweh said, okay, you have the faith. You're showing the faith, but I'm about to prove that you have the faith. That's it. All right. That's it. And the proof usually comes by fire. All oh, right. Oh, yes, it does. Okay. And the scripture says that. And so that it, it has to be tried and proven mm -hmm. by fire. Okay. Right. And so I was walking through something. I've been walking through something these last uh, couple of weeks in, uh, at work. And I've just been saying, Father, Father. And he was like, girl, the trying of your faith. We're going to get into that. We're going to get into that in this teaching. The trying of your faith. Mm -hmm. It's working patience. Yes. It's that long suffering and long suffering. He said, but let patience have a perfect work. He said, you're going to see how all of this comes. I said, man, how, why, why am I being tested and tried on this one? I thought I already, he said, because it's another dimension of faith that you're going to have to have. He said, you started here, you got here. Now I want you to get uh, up yes, there get up and if there. you're gonna get up oh, there yeah. where's my hand if you're gonna get up there, there yeah, yeah if you're gonna come up yeah you're gonna have to be tried and you're gonna have to be tested that's it and you're gonna have to pass the test and so i was sitting in a, a conference room yeah, today get up there and i was like okay father what do I, how do I handle this? What do I do? I know I'm being tested to being be tested. proven. That's right. That's right. I know that's what you want to do. Pass the test. And, and right. he told me, this is what I need you to do. Mm -hmm. And he just began to share with me. And I promise you, when he shared with me, that weight just came off of it's me. Prophets, come on. And man. he said, now just do what I told you to do. That's right. And this yeah. is how, yeah. how the, the testing and the proving yes. and the trying yes. how it all works together and it's not my favorite part mm -hmm. i think as believers we got to stop acting yeah religious like oh i just i just love going oh. through the fire you know it, that pure it's worth it for the pure yeah. go that's right and it is but that's we right. need to say when the fire comes, sometimes I want to run out the door. It hurts. <laughs> I know the fire's coming. I see the fire looking at me. Oh, I'm discerning right, whether or not the you fire know. is from Yah or from the inner and, the, and, and Holy Spirit. Like, girl, you know that's my fire. Stop playing. Mm -hmm. And so that's the part of my the trying of my faith that I don't I don't particularly yeah. <laughs> want to go through that, but. For the sake right. of being in right standing okay, with Yah, I'm That's like, right. Father, give me to be willing and obedient. Obedient. Because I got to get to the good of the land. Willing lady. and I obedient. I got to be willing to go through the fire. I'm not rushing to, I'm not trying to find nobody's fire. That's right. <laughs> I'm just, if you present me with the fire, but like you did Moses, you presented it to him, then I'm taking off my sandals. Mm -hmm. All right? We're going to do this. And so as I sat there today, I said, Father, I really see what you mean about leveling up in our faith. That sometimes we do get a little comfortable and then we realize that the miracle, not the miracles, the miracle, he couldn't work one miracle because of unbelief. He could not open up the portal of miracle. Let mm -hmm. us not be the ones that's stopping the portal of miracles mm -hmm. over Deer Park, over Grand Cayman, right. over that's our right. homes, that's right. over our regions. Let's let's go forth, you all. And so it's the proof. The proof, oh, you know, like our parents would say, the proof is in the pudding. You yes. know what they were saying? It's in the finished product, right? That's so right. the proof, you know, that by which a thing is proved or tested. And also another meaning is conviction, being convicted by this thing. And so we have to really go forth in what Yah has said, y'all. We cannot hold back any longer. Y'all get that? Mm -hmm. We have to level up in our faith. A couple, um, oh, thank y'all for putting yeah. me on. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, ma'am. I greet you all in the name of our Father. Yes. That's why Prophet is the Bible says, and the just shall live by mm -hmm. faith. It's not easy. 
there's a task that only he can equip us to do. Yes, ma'am. And most people don't understand it. Mm-hmm. I remember when I first came to Bolium, and you all know, Apostle Prophetess, uh-huh. how one man got up and made the statements that he made about me. Mm-hmm. Had no idea of who I was. But by faith, mm-hmm. he said, we reap if we think not. Mm-hmm. All we have to do is hold on mm-hmm. and keep on keeping on. And he said, we reap if we faint not. I love you all to life. We all love them. you Be to life. Bless you, bless you, bless you, Apostle Wells. I'm telling you, Yahweh is faithful. As you continue, we pray blessing upon blessing as you continue to seek the Father to continue to increase in your faith. And you're absolutely right. I love what you said about only Yah could give us the power and the grace to do this. Only Him. Only Him. So blessings to you, Apostle. We love you so much to life. Yes. Is that teacher? Teacher Patterson has her hand up. Yes, Teacher Patterson. Teacher Patterson, if you can hear us, we can't hear you. All right. Well, let's come back to Teacher Patterson. It may seem like she has um, maybe some uh, um, technical difficulties. Let's go to Elder Mitchell and Teacher Patterson will come back to you. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Uh, I just wanted to, Apostle uh, started with my, my word when he was giving the scripture on faith. As you were teaching and you gave us the Hebrew, it it questioned my thinking on what I thought faith meant. Mm-hmm. So I ended up, you know, Googling it. And the Oxford Language Dictionary said, complete trust or confidence in someone or something. Mm. And it gave similarities and similar words like trust, belief, Mm -hmm. confidence, conviction, reliance, dependency, optimism, hopefulness, and expectation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Mm -hmm. wow, you know, and as you were giving the words, it it is such a broad thing, Mm -hmm. our faith. But when I was looking at conviction, it said a formal declaration that someone is guilty of a criminal offense made by the verdict of a jury or the decision of a judge. Mm, 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 mm. And I'm like, we are guilty when we when we lack faith. Yes, we are. We we are so guilty. And, and you hadn't looked at it like that, mm-hmm. you know, but the verdict of Yahweh, the word says. Uh, unbelief is what gets us in trouble. Yes, mm-hmm. it does. And then it said, I don't hear the opposite of faith is mistrust. Mm-hmm. So how how this walk that we have, we're not, we don't have the option to mistrust mm-hmm. what the father is saying and be and be truly reliant, mm-hmm. you know, in what he's saying to us and what has been spoken and declared, you know. Because he has brought us a long way yes, to get he to his point to do what he's trying to do. Mm-hmm. He, he's steady, you know, showing himself strong in our lives, and you know, we get a little a little shaky, you know, just because of the fact of what he is saying is coming to pass. Mm, yes, indeed, it's it's coming to pass. At, at one point, we could sit back and say, "Ah, oh, well, it ain't happened yet." Or, you know, or whatever we want to, you know, throw out there when we don't see what we've asked for, mm-hmm. you know, appear. But now he's showing us in so many different ways that now we're in this, speak for Daphne, uh, I'm in this mode of, I can't believe it now, you know. Mm-hmm. You, I, I've been saying, okay, Father, you ain't, I ain't seen you show up. You know, I see you do a little here. I see you do a little there. But now he has built me up 
where I do realize that I am worthy of everything that That's he is right. doing in my life. Mm -hmm. And at one point, I could not say that. Mm -hmm. I could not say I was worthy. Mm -hmm. Yes, I knew because what you reap what you sow. Yes, I'm sowing good. I'm trying to do good and live right. But I never thought I was worthy of it All because right. I never saw the worthiness mm -hmm. when I looked. You always saw somebody semi doing what's right mm -hmm. or they out in the, in the appearance of what's right. But behind closed doors is another story. Yeah. Uh oh. But now my life, I can't speak for nobody else, but for my life, mm -hmm. I see him doing what he said he was going to do. And when, he, and when he called me beloved almost 10 years ago, and I didn't understand the magnitude of being a beloved. Mm -hmm. But now when you know that you are the son of, and a daughter of the king and that he loves you the way he loves you, not with strings being tied to his love. Mm -hmm. it, it grows our faith in leaps and bounds when we get beyond the, that, the area of being afraid and not thinking that we're worthy of this. Yes, yes, yes. And, so, yes. and I just thank you and apostles so much, you yeah. know, for y'all obedience. You know, I never thought, well, yes, I did. I always thought we were going to be awesome and great. <laughs> but I never looked at it like, me being in that number. Mm, that's right. That's you good. Because I came out of that area where you always see the pastors. And like I said, y'all know I came in church late. So what I saw was <laughs> from a child's perspective. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> so, I get you. So, so when I finally got in the game, I'm like, oh, uh, I'm on the team. So, <laughs> but it's just amazing your obedience. And in that and how the father uses you because of y'all obedience to him. And he can trust you. And because of that trust and your level of obedience and your transparency, Amen. it allows your children, your spiritual children to see and know that there is a people that love you Amen. and want to do what's right at all costs. So thank y'all so much. Thank you, Elder. Right. Thank That's you right. for sharing and everything and that's such a beautiful testimony because the it's it's like y'all know me and gi joe we go a long way long way back you know knowing that you're worthy is half the battle i promise you i think sometimes it's 90 percent of the battle sometimes right. it varies in percentages of what it is so for you coming in and saying but wait i know i'm worthy these are things because sometimes we know we're capable sometimes we we do realize we do have some capabilities but if you don't feel worthy to carry out those things then it could cause some issues so That's thank right. you so much for sharing that was awesome praise yahweh we pray yahweh's amazing <laughs> blessing upon your life keep on embracing what he's saying and move into the place that he has for you to go into. Right. Even if it looks like nothing you've ever seen before. Mm -hmm. Y'all know when we were in the, the, um, the, the storefront, I got this shirt because man, I couldn't believe it was in blue and gold. And it was a Nike shirt that said, I'm like nothing you've mm -hmm. ever seen before. And I, I wore that for myself. Cause I'm like nothing you've ever seen before, but most of all for breath of life. And most times when people don't understand because they've never seen anything like it, That's then right. again, remember what uh, uh, Dr. Monroe taught us that when you don't understand the, the, um, the purpose of a thing, abuse is inevitable that's right and so that's why we have to understand and when we as pastors really got a hold to oh this is what it's supposed to be and this is okay then we will not allow that because so we <laughs> understand the purpose of of uh bolim and of you that's amen right. amen do we have teacher patterson now hi i'm here yeah can you hear me? yes we can hear you <laughs> praise yahweh i'm sorry about whatever happened uh, okay. Bless Yahweh for this message tonight. Thank you all. Um, I said I wasn't going to say nothing, but anyhow, <laughs> you started it. You started yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I was thinking as you read the scripture from um, Matthew 8, 
there in verse 12, when it talks about, but the sons of the rain shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You know, I was thinking, you know, that that would be like the proving ground or the testing for our faith. That's what happens when we don't have the level of faith that Yahweh is, is wanting us to have at any particular time or, um, you know, for whatever test that we may be going through. Um, I, I know it's referring to the lake of fire, that kind of right. thing, the end days, but but I, I know I myself have been uh, feeling anyway, like I've been cast into outer darkness. And of course, not enjoying that journey at all um, because there was some weeping and gnashing of teeth, like God, Yahweh, get me out of here. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, you know, coming to understand, okay, this is, this is causing my, he's building up something in me. He's causing this, mm -hmm trial these trials to um work patience and and faith that um you know when when not only this test but the next test that anyway my faith does level up and so you know i think that 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 is part of of the process of building our faith even um like you were saying you know it's of course not something we enjoy going through but but uh, it does it does cause us to have a greater strength, a greater resolve, um, greater faith. That's all. Amen. Amen. No, that was good, um, uh, Teacher Patterson. Thank you for uh, sharing that with us. Because no, I I think your assessment of that why wouldn't Yahweh uh, through this through Yeshua be talking about what it would it what it's like when we don't have faith you know because we don't have access to the revelation of the gathering of Abraham Yitzchak mm -hmm. and Jacob you know and all that he talks about when we're in unbelief because remember even in the scripture it ties going from one level of belief to another level of belief and then it talks about that revelation that we get well, that's not coming to us if we're walking in unbelief. So yes, I agree with you that there are some really rough patches when we are in unbelief. And sometimes we have to walk through some of that for the proving ground for y'all to show, this is where your faith is. I forget that I'm not on the screen. This is where your faith is now, but you know, you have this much and I need you to have that, that much and that in between can sometimes be yeah uh, challenging and we need that's why we need one another that's why I love what Apostle Dandy said come on y'all let's go tear off the roof you know yeah. let's get together we yeah. can join our faith to go forth to really be in a place where we can help one another Amen. you know so when my faith may not be where it needs to be then somebody else is there and when your faith is not where it needs to be, somebody else is there to, you know, to pray with you and to walk with you through that, you know. So uh, thank you for sharing, Teacher Patterson. Really appreciate that. Really appreciate can that. I Can I add one more thing to it sure. as you were just speaking? Sure. So a couple of weeks ago when you were speaking about the, the different bags, uh, mm -hmm. the different um, containers, you know, the thin the thin bags, even to the, the hefty bags. And so, yes, Yahweh, it's okay for us to have the little dry cleaner size or, or capacity bags. But as Yahweh has called us to be distribution centers, you know, he's building us up to that place where we have the concrete walls, uh, yeah. you know, the, the size, the length, the depth of the, of yeah. what the, distribution centers are. And so, of course, the concrete is is a much more involved process, I would think, I don't know, <laughs> than, than those flimsy plastic bags uh, to make. But, you know, Yahweh is, is getting us to that point, building us to that point where our faith is as, as the distribution center, those big, you know, the big concrete places where 
not only just to store, but you know, to even to um, to process, to be able to get out to others where it's needed. Anyway, that's it. thank you. <laughs> oh, I appreciate yeah. that because you're right. Like I said, in in when the father gave me that word, he said, "Yeah, you pulling on that bag. That bag. It seemed it seemed like it have a little bit of 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 force to it until you put something in it." And until you put something that needs to be carried in it. So what you're saying is that with those, with the concrete, you know, with the glory, the glory is heavy. And to be glory carriers, you're going to have to have more capacity in that dry cleaners bag. That's right. You just, right. you're not going to be able. And when I say capacity, I'm not just talking about size, but the capacity, the yeah. be able to hold the weight of it That's when right when you do grades of of things you 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 all know this when you buy a chair they do what the capacity of that chair is okay. how much it can hold mm -hmm. how much it can hold so it's imperative that when the father is doing his his capacity rating on us that it's not like well she could probably carry a a, a pencil or a pen but that's as far as we're gonna go with it. Yeah. You have to be able to to carry some weight. That's right. Like, you know, get your weight up in that sense, you know. And this is why we gotta level up in our faith. Mm -hmm. And so just before we pray, um, Sister Deshawn says here, leveling up in our faith should be one of our lifelines as believers. And I daughter, I completely agree, most certainly. That's right. Because if we live by faith, then it is a life to a lifeline mm -hmm. and uh apostle dandy said we really have to be determined to see ourselves the way y'all sees us amen we must we must and praise yahweh thank you media ministry much needed message it is imperative that we level up in this time that's right that we really get to a place you all that yahweh can speak some things to us I told father when he was walking me through this that I see that you want to share some things at a different um, hemisphere than where I am. I get it and I'm ready to go to that next place. Mm -hmm. I do see the fire and I know I have to walk it out, but I trust you. Um, one last thing I will say about that. I was I can't remember if I shared this with the entire congregation or not but um as as i'm walking through certain things um in my life and in my career and different things sometimes i'm in meetings and different things that i'm like okay father you know i i want to be diligent in what you have given me to do i always want to be checked in right. i always want to be present Amen. i said some of these things i i need your help in understanding so he began to speak to me. This was happening last week specifically. He started to speak to me. And I mean, y'all, everything within me, I had to hold myself not to begin to cry because he began to, I was in the middle of a, <laughs> a, a, a meeting with one of our vice presidents. And um, as, as the meeting was going forth and I was present, I was taking my notes, I was doing everything. Holy Spirit began to say to me, he said, you know that the life of a believer, I, and, and y'all, we all, those of us who say we are believers in Yeshua, I'm talking about you and me. Mm -hmm. He didn't say the life of a prophet. He could have said that, he could have been, could have gone that direction. That's not what he said though. He said the life of a believer is challenging in this way, daughter. It's challenging in that I ask you. In fact, in my word, I said, I send you in as a sheep amongst wolves. Mm -hmm. I send you into places that in your mind, you might even think, oh, why are we doing this again? He said, I position you because I know exactly where I'm taking you. You don't know, but I know. And he said, this level of, of um, rejection and beyond 
is a place of testing that you have to pass to get to these next dimensions that I have for years I've prepared. And he said, before you even came into the earth, some of these places have been prepared. And I have waited patiently, but now I have to allow discomfort so that you will move. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the discomfort is what's going to cause us to level up in our faith. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's the, the pure D discomfort that father will be able to say, it's time for you to do this, this, and this. And we're more attentive to what he's saying because of the discomfort. Yes. And so as you're walking through uncomfortable positions mm -hmm. and, and things that you're going through in your life, ask the father, as I certainly have been asking him, increase my faith. Father, help where there are places of unbelief expose it and dispose of it please in yeshua's name help me to grow up and mature in the things that you want me to mature in so that i could be in the place of revelation that you desire so i wanted to share that with you you're not in this by yourself that's right we're praying for you that's right. we are not people who are not touched by those things as well and those challenges but one thing i know Yahweh is faithful. He is. And he is just, he will bring us to the place he has for us. Keep the faith and keep growing in your faith. Come on, let's go to the Father in prayer. Thank y'all for coming on tonight. Thank you for being faithful tithers and givers. Thank you for everything you do to support the ministry, Amen. whether it's financial, whether it's sending a text and, and some of you do all of the above. Thank you for that. It means a lot to us. Thank you for encouraging us to keep going on and mm -hmm. on. Sometimes we think that, oh, it's the pastors. They know they're doing a good job or they know. No, we don't. We don't know. <laughs> you can tell us. You can tell us. We know what Yahweh is saying, but we don't just automatically know unless you uh, right. share. So thank you for those who share with us how you feel about the ministry and about us as leaders. We love y'all to life. Yes. Amen. All right, let's go to the Father in prayer. Father, how we love you. We adore you. We thank you. Father, we're making some commitments, Father. We're making some commitments here. We're making some commitments to level up in our faith. Father, the things that we're walking through even now, it seems like pressure. It seems like, Father, what's going on? But really it is the trying of our faith. And so, Father, give us to pass the test. Give us to, to go through these things gracefully. You told me don't lose the favor on my life behind the test. You, you know, show up with the faith and show up with the favor of Yah on your mind and on your heart and on your lips. And so, Father, I thank you that that's what you're doing in us and through us. And as you are bringing to pass what we have prayed for, Father, we pray that you would continue to work on us, continue to elevate us, continue to give us to press into deeper and higher realms of your spirit because our faith is coming up. Father, thank you that when the conviction comes through, it'll be that we're guilty yes. of having faith in you. We're guilty of totally depending on you. We're guilty of being pioneers in the faith, in, in, in the length, the depth and the breadth of faith. Thank you, Father. We thank you. We praise you. We love you. Adore you. Now, Father, touch your people. Anybody's dealing with any ailments, send your word. Heal them, Father. Deliver them from destruction. By the stripes of Yeshua, we, your people, we are healed. We thank you that healing is the children's bread. And Father, we thank you that you restore us unto health and you heal all of our wounds. We thank you. We praise you. We love you. We surely thank adore you. It is in the matchless, holy, unbeatable name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we pray. Amen. Amen. And bless Yahweh. Yes. We love you to life. They're going to stop the recording so that you can. Oh, yes. Blessed birthday to Sister LaShonda. We got a chance to, uh, to celebrate her. Make sure that if you haven't already put something on uh, uh, Facebook or you have her number, text her and let her know that you are 
uh, thinking about her on her day, all right? Mm -hmm. Her day of, of birth. All right, y'all. We love y'all to life. We say shalom, shalom, shalom to the saints of the Most High.